Welcome everyone. Today I wanted to do a continuation video for my video that I released yesterday or the day before regarding stake pool operator pledge. So Input Output Global just did a crowdcast on Thursday and this crowdcast was to give the community a sense of where we're going, the direction, give a couple of deadlines or dates that we can expect. One of those dates is May 11th. May 11th, we'll start the friends and family version of the Shelly Haskell testnet. So this is where IO will be inviting some pool operators to join the Haskell version of the testnet before we hit that mainnet. In chat, it was apparent that some people think that May 11th may be the release of Shelly mainnet. That will not be the case. We have to go through a series of phases first before we hit the mainnet. There was a gentleman by the name of Kevin Hammond. He wrote a blog post that is on the IO website. You may want to check that out. So there's a few phases that we have to hit before we hit the Shelly mainnet. So the reason why I wanted to continue this video is because I had a couple of outstanding thoughts that I wanted to get out. And something was made clear in the crowdcast from Kevin Hammond about how the stake pool operator pledge is going to be structured. First of all, during the Crowdcast, Kevin Hammond was speaking about how IO is discussing what that pledge amount is going to be. The number was not released, so that official number is not yet released. However, he did say that within a within the Shelley Haskell testnet, if a stake pool operator removes any sort of ADA from their pledge, so if they pledge, I don't know, Let's say they pledge 1 million or 2 million or 3 million, even if they remove one ADA, no one in that pool will receive rewards for the entire of the, e the entirety of the epoch. So that's five days. So by breaking the pledge, you are also affecting the returns on all the people that are delegating to your pool. So like I said in my previous video, People delegating to pools are going to expect a certain level of customer service, certain level of loyalty, and that loyalty is matched by the stake pool operator's pledge, and that pledge must not be touched. And if we're talking about people that may be, I don't know, let's see, you want to sell within the next couple of years, that's fine, but what if some people are, people may be coming into the Cardano ecosystem in a couple of years? So those same stake pool operators are going to have to have this continuous business operation running and running and running. Hence why I was saying that the rewards for the stake pool operator should be significant enough to, in order for them to motivate, in order for you to motivate locking your rewards up for a prolonged period of time. Because this could be years upon years in order to provide the certain level of customer satisfaction to all those people who are delegating to your pool. Personally, at SCAR, we want people to set it and forget it. How can we live by that motto if we are removing our pledge? But at the same time, if we hit that next bull cycle, stake pool operators are going to want to take some money off the table. So what happens then? Especially if pledge amounts are very, very high, which I was insinuating in my last video. Let's say it's three million. Let's say it's two million. If it's a, if it's a high number, it's a big pot to put forward. And there are some people in the comments section that, you know, some people would just lock that money up. Whales will lock that money up. Not necessarily true. Whales want to have access to that liquidity just as much as you and I want to have access to that liquidity. The important thing of investing is being able to take your money out when you want to take your money out. There are plenty of people that break their 401k and their IRA agreements all the time in order to draw money out of their retirement and use it for everyday funds. So the same applies to cryptocurrency investing or any sort of investing. No matter how much money you want, sometimes you want access to that liquid cash immediately. And let's say that Cardano does a 10X or a 20X or a 30X. Those whales all of a sudden that had maybe millions of dollars invested, all of a sudden they have tens of millions of dollars or maybe a hundred million dollars sitting there waiting for them to withdraw. You think they want to lock all that up? No, not necessarily, not necessarily at all. So there's a financial commitment from the stake pool operator to pledge that badge of loyalty towards their pool. In return, the ROS, the return on stake for the delegators is going to be higher. 
in effect that's going to affect the performance of the pool, make it more competitive, and it's going to be the most competitive pools that win. So that's that. And I'm going to move past the rock pie solution as far as how they're mitigating low cost stake pool solutions with high pledge amounts because I exhausted that topic last last video. But one more thing I wanted to talk about was also this idea of stake pool operators may feel the urge or they may be inclined if we learn about it f far enough in advance to start pooling up ADA to meet that minimum requirement. But there are several issues with this. First of all, there's a whole issue of trust. You've got to trust people in order to pool your money together and make sure that no one is doing any shenanigans. Personally, we have a team of four. I trust all my guys. I trust all my guys, but I trust Rick. I trust people that I know, but people that I've never met before, that I've, that I've never seen before, it's hard to establish that trust. If you look at the roadmap, multi-sig was supposed to be implemented within Daedalus. So multi-sig is this idea of having multi-signature for transactions. So people could pool their money together in essence, and then multiple people have, would have to sign in order to remove it. So it's kind of like a smart contract. So you know, if you have five people that are pooling their money together, maybe two out of the five or three out of the five have to agree for funds to be withdrawn in order for them to be withdrawn. That would be a great feature and a very helpful feature for getting these smaller pool operators in, in groups and managing the risk and allowing people to get to that get to that amount. But unfortunately, I don't think multi-sig is going to be implemented anytime soon. So a lot of those stake pool operators are just going to have to deal with lower performing pools. But that's that. Um, so also with this, this idea, you know, I've, I've, I've commented about it a couple times on my channel about saturation points. So you're requiring people to put a large pledge amount, but at the same time, you're maxing out the amount of rewards that you can, they can get. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Now, let's talk about where the operator fee is going, because if you think about this in the in the terms of the race to the bottom, you're like, oh, well, operators are putting more financial risk. They're taking a greater financial risk, putting more money on the table. They may have an improved return on stake or they may have improved the return on their investment. So, um, you know, or they may put so much money down that they have to raise their operating fees. But at the same time, you're going to be able to operate a pool whether you have pledge or not. So the people that are not able to meet that minimum pledge, they're probably going to drop their fees to near zero in order to attract people to delegate within their pool. So they won't be that profitable and chances are the pools with minimum pledge are going to be more profitable than the smaller pools. But at the same time, that's going to equalize things and not necessarily push the operating fee in the upwards direction. It's all about supply and demand for this particular curve. And I don't see it necessarily. I still see that race at the bottom within the main net. Um, there are a lot of pools out there and it's just what's going to happen. So I'm very interested to see what the pledge amount is. And you may have also wondered why I pulled out or how I pulled out that 3 million. Watch Rick's video as well. I'm in complete agreement with it. And I've been talking about that 3 million pledge in my telegram group for a long period of time for a couple years now just using the circulating supply so i had an idea it was going to be around there but it not being implemented in the test net is just uh, it's a little bit unbalanced but you know if it's not three million i think it's going to be in the seven figures in in ada and uh, we're just going to have to wait and see we're going to have to wait and see so until the next video let me know your thoughts let me know your concerns and yeah